right, so let's take a look at this F210, which is RAM analysis. I'm trying to get to the top there, memory analysis. So we're going to get a RAM file. I think it's one I made years ago. So we download this file. And there it comes, not too big. Then we have to unzip it with 7-zip, which is not by default installed in Windows. You'll have to install it if you don't have it. Right click, uh, show more options. Looks like I don't have it. All right, I'm going to have to install it on this machine. This is my uh, Windows on ARM machine, but it can run Intel-based software, which is, of course, whoa, they've got ARM version. Ooh, let's see if they have an ARM version. That would be cool. That's very forward thinking of them to have a Windows on ARM version. Ooh. Not that it really matters, but that will make it run faster if it works. It appears to work. Okay, let's see if I can unzip this file now. Right click. 7-zip. Extract here. Ooh, there it goes. Going pretty fast. I think maybe the native ARM software is good. All right, that created, uh, should have created a mem dump file, which I thought I saw, but now I'm not seeing it. Uh, let's try sorting by size. There, mem dump, hmm. Maybe I spoke too soon, where is it? Oh, there it is, it's down here. Okay, just because it's old. All right, and it's half a meg, so this is the memory, I sort of memory on some machine, like probably Windows XP or something, down to just half of a meg and took the memory image, so it wouldn't be too big. All right, so let me go to my project here. Let's see, Control W, is it gonna work? It is gonna work, all right. All right, so now I got the evidence file. Oh, I should verify the uh, cache of it. That's a good idea. Especially since I used some strange, uh, do I have, I don't have hash calc. All right, what is this nonsense? Um, all right, I'll do it since we're here. Hash calc is, Slavosoft hash calc is here. All right. There it is. Okay, there's hash calc. Um, I guess that's how you do it. It didn't seem like I download here. Okay. Uh, hmm, I'm disturbing. Let's go to downloads. I don't know if I'm getting anything good or not. Let's see what I'm getting here. Oh, it's a zip. Okay, that's reasonable then. Show in Finder. Wait. Finder? Wait a minute. I'm not, a, I'm not in the Windows machine anymore. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Somehow I fell out of the Windows machine. Okay. Hash calc. Okay, there's hash calc, okay. Now I can analyze that file, mem dump. Let's just sort by name, that might put the one I need near here. Well, uh, it's still doing the stupid sorting by date, whether I like to or not, there's some way to turn it off. Windows always invents some new way to irritate you. All right, calculate. And then I want to see the SHA-1 should start with 521. All right. And it does. It starts with 521, so the file is intact. Good. All right. So now um, we have to enable an experimental module in autopsy. So let's get autopsy going. Um, there's autopsy. In fact, it looks to me like autopsy is already running. Left over from before. So that's... I think I'll make a new case um, to get rid of this old stuff. F210, I think. All right. All right, now I wonder about this okay, tools, plugins installed. Let's see if I can do that from here. I got to go here. Okay, there's autopsy, tools. Okay, I got to cancel this. Tools, plugins. 
All right, and go to installed. All right. And now experimental activate, activate, finish. Okay. I want to turn on the experimental stuff. Um, activate. Activate. And finish. Because apparently the RAM analysis is uh, not considered finished yet. All right. Now we make a new case with all this jazz, next finish, and import the memory image. Let's see if I can get back to it. Add data source. Okay, it's gonna be um, memory image file volatility. Okay, so I add a data source, and I don't care about the name. That's right, so you only had a few of these before. Now it's added a new one, memory image file. That's one of these new experimental ones. And this is Volatility, which is the main open source tool used to analyze memory, which is pretty hard to use, a command line tool. And now it's built into autopsy, so it's gotten much easier to use. So this class has gotten much easier than it used to be. Uh, this tool does a lot of the work for us. So um, next, OK, now I want to speed it up. Because it takes a long time, I'm going to clear all except a few. Consoles, hash dump, LSA dump. So um, deselect all and then select consoles and uh, going to go back to my list. Consoles, hash, LSA, net. Okay. They're alphabetical. Hash dump, LSA. and net something, net scan, okay. And then PS list, shell bags, user assist. PS list, shell bags, these are all just common forensic artifacts you can find in memory, user assist. And these are the ones that I found were in this image and gave useful information. A lot of them don't do any good. So those are the ones that are actually going to help. And then uh, just next. OK. So it's uh, I'm done selecting things. Um, why can't I hit next or something? Uh, next, finish. All right, what have I done wrong? I wonder if this is going to tell me anything. OK, so here. Um, Select data source, check those things, and I should have a next button, but somehow I do not have a next button. Hmm. All right, maybe I'm going to have to create a case. Something is broken here. If I go back, is something wrong here? Memory image? Nope, okay. Uh, how rude. Let's try making a new case. Case, new case. Maybe I somehow, let's do mem. Mem. Perhaps the fact that I interrupted it to add the module. Or maybe I'm going to have to close and, no, the, I don't know, we'll see. But this is what you get for using free software. I think I didn't not select data source. Some uh, op code thinks he saw it in my mistake, although I don't understand what he's saying about it. Someone says, select the image file. Good. Two students apparently saw what I did wrong, but I didn't. Um, I had to select some file, they say. Well, let's see, memory image. Oh, I never selected the file anywhere. That's right. Oh, thank you, up here. Yeah, that's it. I never told it where the image was. That's a good reason to be complaining. Uh, and I would find downloads if I could. All right, uh, see users, downloads, everybody. Microsoft always has to make everything impossible. All right, and uh, there's mm -hmm. Dump. All right, good, thank you. Now, oh good, it looks like you remembered to check all those things. That I appreciate, I don't have to do that all over again. Now I can hit next and uh, at the ingest, looks like it's turned them all. Well, that's the old ingest modules. Let me see what I said about that. Um, here, it's not moving. Well, it's, that's the real one. We're, I'm trying to find the instructions. There they are. All right. At the ingest, just click next. Okay, that's what I'll do. Next. So it's going to try and find all that other stuff. But I think it's going to give up quickly because it's looking for stuff like iPhone data and stuff that's not in there. So anyway, we'll see how slow this is. Good. 
All right, and after this, I think we're just going to find things, and I'll show you a couple of them, but uh, after this, it's just a matter of reading what you find in here. That's why this tool is fantastic. It does all the hard work. It's really quite a chore, because memory is kind of unstructured. It's looking through memory and finding out this looks like a notepad file, this looks like a command line command session, this looks like a network connection. It's putting all that stuff together. And um, I guess it's still doing something. It's not showing any progress, and the only thing option I have is cancel. Seems like it ought to show a progress bar somewhere or something. Well, it hasn't crashed. But I'm used to seeing some kind of clue that it's working. Oh, it's okay. I guess it, yes, it is working. Okay. All right, it's doing something. Running module PS list. Okay, so it's going through that list of modules and running them one by one. Shell bags, good. And as you see, each one of them takes about 10 or 15 seconds, which is why it's useful to clear most of them, because there's about 30, and I'm only going to need like six of them. This is true of the command line version of this tool, too. You issue a command, and you have to wait for quite a while. It really has to hunt through the memory, that big memory file, to find these things. be able to pause the video. Well, I think I can't do that in this. Um, yeah, I can do it in Zoom, but I don't think I can do it in this OBS thing. At least not obviously. It'll be up to the viewer to skip ahead. Shell bag seems to be taking a long time. This is why, you know, some people say you, you really need to get like four cores and a lot of memory and everything for your friendship machine. Like I said, you can use any Windows machine for the projects I put in this course, but sometimes they're slow if you haven't got a lot of power in your friendship examining machine. And if we were going to do a lot of real big cases like real hard drives from modern Windows systems, you'd really have to have a powerful machine to analyze them. Hope it's doing something. Oh, it is doing something. Okay. Running user assist. I think it's even doing them in order, so this is uh, probably the last one. Yep, user assist is the last one. It's also a whole lot simpler than the other ones. It's just one registry key. There, it's done. Now, now it's still doing more work down here. But I can finish up there. And now, I might have some data to look at now. I might have to wait some more. Uh, okay, to see my data, at the top left, expand data sources and go to module output. So data sources and, uh, I don't know, maybe I don't have module output yet. Let's see how it looks. Data sources, mem dump, okay, up here. Yeah, thank you. Data sources, mem dump, mem dump, module output, there we go. All right, and now you got the output of each of these things. So if you go to consoles, for example, then down here you see a page of data, and in there you're going to see the console process. These are command line things that have run. CSRSS has been running, whatever that is, uh, Windows Service, I think. And uh, scroll down here, you might see other ones, more CSRSS. And... Uh, What's that? Oh, username, password, net user. Yeah, I remember I, I, I did a command here to learn how to use the net user command, and then I made commands here to add new users to the machine. 
So you can see the command line commands that people have been executing on the machine picked out of the memory here. So that's cool. And there's a flag to find in there. Then you can find the password hashes that are in there, which is pretty awesome. You get the Windows hash passwords, which you can crack if the password is not too long and complicated to get login passwords. You can get LSA, which is a local security authority secrets that are stored in Windows machines, which can sometimes include clear text passwords. Uh, after up through Windows XP, you would frequently find the main administrator password unencrypted in the LSA secrets, which is a major security flaw in Windows. And of course, a big benefit for investigators who want to get past a password. Then NetScan shows you uh, network connections. So you can find out what services are listening on ports and so on. And a PS list lists all the running processes on the machine, just like Task Manager. And shell bags list you the name of folders and where they, the size of them and such, so you can see what folders have recently been opened on the machine. And user assist um, gives you the name of executables that have been run on the machine. And you can find a, a obvious uh, piece of dangerous stuff that's been running on the machine. And uh, then you can go back and crack one of those passwords. Maybe you want extra credit. So there's a bunch of flags to find here, and you'll see that there's a gold mine of information in those memory files. It is a little slow to analyze them, but it's pretty good. So I'm going to stop this recording.